Good day to everyone. I'm Angelica Santiago of BSIT2CBPO. And now I'm going to share to you about the networking one, which is data communication. What is data communication? It is the exchange of data between two devices via some form of transmission medium. Another Definition of it is data communication usually requires the existence of a transportation or communication between medium between the nodes of one thing to communicate with each other, such as copper wire, fiber optic cables, or wireless signals. So, data communication is incorporate several techniques and technologies to enable any form of electronic communication. So one of example of data communication is if your computer is connected to the internet via Wi-Fi communication, which uses a wireless medium to send and receive data from one or more remote servers. So your Wi-Fi connection will be served as your as your communication to exchange your data. To another remote server so from the word communication ito yung palitan di ba yung palitan ng mga sentence or ng message between two or more person but it at this time as it is all about data data and with the help of your internet connection so we have five characteristics of effective communication. The first one is it is uses the same transmission medium and language. So what is all about of it? Transmission media is a communication channel that carries the information from the sender to the receiver. Data is transmitted through the electromagnetic signals. The main functionality of the transmission media is to carry the information in the form of bits to LAN or the, or the local area network. So, in transmission media, ito yung magserve or it will carry your data or your information from the one who sent to to the or to your receiver on how it will be going to transmit it or it or on how it will be going to transfer so the second one is the direct and indirect communication so what is direct communication happens when a speaker's true intentions are communicated in his or her verbal message it is expressed as the speaker's tenders needs and desires explicitly but in the indirect communications happens when a speaker true intentions are hidden like body language gestures etc so when you say direct communication Ito yung nakikita mo yung facial expressions ng kausap mo. For example, um, for example is face to face, something like that. But when you say in verbal, uh, verbal communication, so hindi lang naman siya personal as in, pwede rin siya sa video call, video call, video call. At least doon, makikita mo pa rin yung facial expression ng kausap mo. So, that is direct communication. In indirect communication, what is the example of it is the your gesture, hand gesture, body language, or body movement. So, in technology, chatting or texting is also included as indirect communication. Why? Because hindi mo nakikita yung gustong sabihin or yung facial expression, yung tunay na ibig sabihin ng sinasabi sa'yo ng kausap mo. So, that is the difference between direct and indirect communication. So, when we say direct communication, 
it is as long as you were seeing her facial emotion, his facial expression, but in indirect communication, it is you can't you can see his or her ver okay so I'm sorry so in indirect communication it is uh, hindi mo nakikita kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng gustong iparating sa'yo and the third is mutual understanding there's a two way process of reaching mutual, mutual understanding in which is participants not only exchange information or news, ideas, and feelings, but it is also create and share meaning. So, the continuous process. So, number four, this is the process of communication. It starts with the sender encoding the idea and sending into the receiver via a medium or a channel so the receiver's job is to decode the encoded decode the encoded message and extract information from it and also understand the message and the for the last characteristics of effective communication is use of words as well as symbol so when you speak or write your words when you speak or write your words your words act as a symbol for what you are meaning so what is does it mean so sa sinasabi mo pa lang naiintindihan na naiintindihan na kung ano yung gusto mong iparating this symbol systems are part of what is called augmentative and alternative communication or AAC for short. So what is AAC for short? So what is AAC? It is stands for augmentative and alternative communication. Some of these symbol systems involve the use of gestures or signs. These are explained. So in the last part of characteristics of effective communication, so, sinasabi dito na hindi lang sa pagbigkas ng mga salita, malalaman ko ng ibig mong sabihin, kung ano yung gusto na is mong iparating. But, sa gestures mo pa lang, sa mga signs, sa mga symbols na ipinapakita mo, dapat doon makikita na kung ano yung gusto mong iparating or nais mong ipahiwatig sa gusto mong sabihin. So, next is data. What is data? Refers to information presented in whatever form is agreed upon by the parties creating and using the data. So, data is the quantities, characters, or symbols on which operations are performed by a computer being stored and transmitted in the form of electrical signals and recorded on magnetic, optical, or mechanical recording media. So, it is the quantities, characters, or symbols that operate, operation are performed by computer. We have three fundamental characteristics of data communication. The first one, the first one is delivery. The system must deliver data to the correct destination. So when we say delivery, um, for example of this is here texting a message, some message. So, yung, da, yung gusto mong sabihin or yung text mo dun, yung sentence mo dun, kung ano yung itinipe mo, 
yun din dapat yung marireceive ng gusto, ma gusto mong makareceive ng message mo. So, for the short term, same of what you send and what it can be received. The second is the accuracy. Accuracy. The system must deliver the data accurately. So when we say accurately, um, okay, I'm sorry, the block. Uh, when you say accuracy, I'll repeat. This is the system must deliver the data accurately. So, dapat maayos yung pagkakadeliver nung gusto mong sabihin dun sa message. And dapat ma-receive din ito ng receiver ng maayos. So, the last is the timeliness. The system must deliver data in a timely manner. So, Meron kasi yung point na, halimbawa, your phone is not correctly timed. For example is, 1 o'clock ngayon, pero yung phone mo is naka 8 o'clock. So, anong susundin niya? Yung, perf yung tamang oras ba or yung nasa phone mo? So, syempre, yung nasa data mo is 8 o'clock. Yung nasa data ng cellphone mo is 8 o'clock. So, yun ang susundin niya ng pag-send ng message sa receiver. Magsisend ka ng message mo at the time of 8 o'clock. And it will obviously send at 8 o'clock. But, sa receiver mo, kung nakatime naman siya, kung yung phone niya is exactly nakatime, naka uh, timely 1 o'clock in her data it will receive as exactly 1 o'clock components of data communication first one message it is information or data to be communicated the second is sender it is the device that sends the data message Receiver, it is the device that receives the message. Medium, it is the physical path by which a message travels from sender to receiver. Protocol, it is set of rules governs data communication. So, components of data communication, madali lang naman tong intindihin. So, number one, message. So, alam na natin na ito'y information. Information na gusto mong ma-receive. Gusto mong ma-receive ng receiver mo. So, yung message is sent ni sender kay receiver. So, that is the components of data communication that it how a data communication process so what is medium so ito yung ginagamit as as i've said a while back is the transmission media so ito yung mag carry it will carry your message or your data to transfer it to your receiver so protocol the last part is it is a set of rules governs data communication so it is a rules so in data components or in data components in data communication may mga rules din tayong sinusunod kaya meron yung minsan is nag error something like that so, data representation. Number one is text. So, what is text? Text is representation is one of the fundamental problems in the text mining 
and information retrieval. It aims to numerically represent the unstructured text documents to make them mathematically computable. What, so what is the part of text? The first is ASCII or ASCII acronym and example. So ASCII Abbreviation of American Standard Code for Information Interchange, a standard data transmission code that is used by smaller and less powerful computers to represent both textual data. So what are those? Those are the letters, numbers, and punctuation marks. And non-input device commands. Or the control characters. We have also the ESCI, Unicode, and ISO. The second is numbers. And the third, images. Ojo, video, so. In your mobile phone, sa mobile phone na lang tayo magbigay na examples. You have an application of messages. You have an ap application of calculator or system. You have an application for images, for audio, and video. So, magkakahiwalay silang lima. So, in data representation, it is stored. The 5 is stored by each. So, uh, anong tawag dito? So, sa data, may pagkakaayos-ayos talaga. Hindi sila magkakahalo-halo. So, like what I've said, there's an icon for text, icon for numbers, icon for images, icon for audio, and video. So, inaayos ng data mismo yung yung data ng phone mo or ng any mobile or any gadgets of yours. So, in data flow, in data flow, number one is simplex. Simplex is communication is undirectional. So, what is simplex? A simplex communication channel only sends information in one, in one direction. For example, a radio station usually sends signals to the audience but never receives signals from them. Thus, a radio station is a simplex channel. It is also common to use simplex channel in fiber optic communication. One strand is used for transmitting signals and two others for receiving signals. <coughs> But this might not be of use because the pair of fiber strands are often combined to one cable. The good part of simplex mode is that its entire bandwidth can be used during the transmission. The second one is the half duplex. Each station can both transmit, transmit and receive but not at the same time. So, in half duplex or half duplex mode, data can be transmitted in both directions on a signal sent carrier, except not at the same time. At a certain point, it is actually a simplex channel whose transmission directions can be switched. Mm. Like walkie talkie is a typical half duplex device it has a push to talk push to talk button which can be used to turn on the transmitter but turn off the receiver therefore um, once you push the button you cannot hear the person you are talking to but your partner your partner can hear you and advantage of half duplex is that single track is cheaper than the double truck.
the last is the full diplex. Both stations can transmit and receive simultaneously. So, in full duplex communication channel is able to transmit data in both directions on a signal carrier at the same time. Mm. It is constructed as a pair of simplex links that allows bidirectional simultaneous transmission. Take telephone as an example. So, take an Telephone as, a, as an example, people at both ends of calls can speak and be heard by each other at the same time because there are two communication paths between them. Thus, using the full duplex mode can greatly increase the efficiency of communication. So, we have networking network criteria. The first one is the performance. It can be measured in many ways. Transmit time. It is the amount of time required for a message to travel from one device to another. So it is time required for your message to travel from one device to another. The response time. It is the elapsed time between an inquiry and a response. So, it is the elapsed. The transit time, it is time required. The response times, the response time, it is the elapsed between your message. The performance of the network depends on many factors such as number of users type of transmission medium capabilities of the hardware and the last is the efficiency of this software for example in your Wi-Fi connection so diba pag you open mo sa Google yung yung main nung Wi-Fi mo so, pwede mo doon makita kung ilan yung nakakonect. Kung ilan yung nakakonect. And sa type of transmission medium. So, it is used by the Wi-Fi. Second is reliability. It is measured by the It is measured by the Number one, frequency of the failure. Number two, time it takes a link to recover from failure and number three network robust, robust robustness in a catastrophe catastrophe yes catastrophe and the last part of and the last part of network criteria is security how the network protect protect data from unauthorized access so, syempre, yung Wi-Fi connection nyo is kailangan mo rin lagyan ng password para masigurado mo na ikaw lang or yung gusto mo lang na mag-connect yung makakaalam. So, walang pwede. Hindi siya open Wi-Fi na kung sinisunong ga sino sinong gagamit. So, at the same time, malakas din yung internet ng Wi-Fi. So, we have categories of network. Network is categorized with the following factors. Number one is size. Number two, ownership. Number three, distance it covers. And the last is physical architecture. So, in size. Uh, in size. So, in categories of network, it is used for everything from accessing the internet or printing a document to downloading an attachment from an email networks are the backbone of business. They can refer to a small handful of devices within a single room to millions of devices spread across the entire group and can be defined based on purpose and or size.
So we have a categories. The first is the land, the second is man, and the last is one. So land is stands for a local area network. What is local area network? We're confident that you have heard of these types of networks before. So naririnig mo na siya, hindi na to bago, common na itong words na lang. LANs are the most frequently discussed networks. One of the most common, one of the most original, and one of the most simplest types of network. LANs connect group of computers and low-voltage devices together across short distance. Within a building or between a group of two or three three buildings in close proximity to each other to share information and resources enterprises typically manage and maintain lots the second is demand or the metropolitan area network so what is metropolitan area network this type of networks are larger than lands it is large it is larger than land so mas malaki siya Mas malaki ang man kaysa sa land. And incorporate elements from both types of network. Man span an entire geographic area. Typically a town or city. But sometimes a camp. Ownership and maintenance is handled by either a single person or company, a local council, a large company, and etc. And the last is wide area network or one. Wide area network slightly more complex than a LAN. Wala silang, halos wala silang pinagkaiba. Or, ay, wala silang pinagkaiba. Halos mas malawak lang si one case sa kailan. One connects computers together across longer physical distances. This allows computers and low voltage devices to be remotely connected to each other over one large network to communicate even when they're miles apart. So, the internet is the most basic example of what? Connecting all computers together around the world because of a once vast reach. It is typically owned and maintained by multiple administrators or the public. So, sorry for the noise. I'm sorry for the noise. So, it is. We ha I have a table of categories. The land, man, and one. The size of land, building, or campus. The size of man, it is for city, and the size of one is for globe. So, in ownership, the land has private owned, the man, public, company, and the one is private or public, or both. They're both. So, in distance, the distance of land is few kilometers, the distance of man extend over entire city, and the distance of one is extend over entire globe. <laughs> so the P architecture, the P architecture of land is the past, star, and ring. In man, land to land, and one is man to man. So, in the example of LAN, we have laboratory network. In the example of MAN, cable network. And for one example, is the internet. So, what is network? Network is a group of connected communication devices such as computers and printers. So in mid 1960s, standalone devices, ARPA Advanced Research Projects Agency 
DOD Departments of Defense, 1967, ACM Association for Computing Machinery Meeting, ARPA is ARPANET. IMP is Interfaces Message Processor. In 1969, ARPANET Reality. We have a four nodes. Number one is University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA or UCLA. The second is the UCSB or the University of California, Santa Barbara. The third is the Standard Research Institute and the last and the last nodes is the University of Utah NCP Network Control Protocol. In 1972, Vint Cerf and Bob Kahn Interneting Project Transmission Control Protocol or the TCP. Number one is encapsulation, wrap, then unwrap. Number two, datagram or UDP prioritizes time over reliability. The third is the functions of a gateway between two. Shortly thereafter, TCP dash TCP higher level functions. Number one is segmentation. Number two is reassembly. Number three is error detection. IP is handle datagram. TCP or IP internet protocols today. We have a physical topology. It refers to the way in which a network is laid out physically. So that is physical topology. It refers to the way in which a network is laid out physically. There is a categories of physical topology. Number one is mesh. Mesh is communication is point to point. So from the word point to point. point to point. Number two is bus. These signals are shared with the backbone cable. So bus hindi ito yung sasakyan ha. Or yung pinagsasakyan. Number three is stars. Signals are passing through the central devices. And the last is the ring. Signals are circular circulates with in the network. So here's the table of topology. We have the advantages and disadvantages and also a future of topology. Number one is mesh. The advantages of mesh is point to point in a link. I'm sorry, link. Robust. And the last is privacy or security. What about the disadvantage of mesh? It is the expensive in cable and I.O. connection. Sheer bulk of writing. So, we have also a future of mesh. This N, negative 1, in connection. The second topology is bus. The advantages of us is less expensive than mesh. Ease of installation. And the disadvantage of bus, of course, it also has, it is the difficult reconnection, difficult to add a station, and limited number of station. But the future of bus is backbone cable. The third is a star. So the advantages of a star is point-to-point -point link also, like a mesh, mesh. It also has a robust, but the difference between mesh star has a less expensive than the mesh. Disadvantage of disadvantages of star is using central devices, and the future of it is hub. And the last topology is ring. The ring has an advantages of point-to-point -point link to both side only. Both side only. Easy to install and configure. There is a disadvantage also of ring and it is an 
directional traffic of signal and the future offering is repeater so i have done i hope here is slightly understand what i've shared to you thank you for listening god bless